133 pounds. These two no strangers to each other. This will be the sixth time they have met. DeSanta won those first two matches. RBY was a true freshman. The Nittany Lions made some adjustments. Yep, and, and you take a look at this video here. What were the adjustments that RBY did? Look at him put that left arm behind his back right there. He knows that that's what DeSanto wants, and he wants to stay away from that. And that was the key here to the adjustments. Frustrating DeSanto's tie. Here we go. Wrestling with Good one arm and one arm behind his back to keep position. And you know, you mentioned this before off camera, Shane, and I agree with you here. You talk about the last three years. One of the guys that has improved the most in the country is this man, Roman Bravo Young. So tough with his defense, being able to explode with his offense. He is just so well-rounded. Yeah. On his feet, Jim, 52 takedowns. He's only given up one, and you see him creeping that left shoulder back. Creeping that left shoulder back, and now puts him in a good defensive position. See how he's going to slide back right there, circle out of it. He knows that that right arm of DeSanto is what he wants to get on his tricep right there. He's not giving it to him, and he'll come to the wrist right there. So that's the adjustment. The and that's from DeSanto, but the hips from huh? RBY. DeSanto head to the outside on his shoe tops. Can he finish it against RBY? It's tough right here. He's got to shoot the places flat here. He's, RBY is dangerous. He's got to go ahead and try to switch off to the double here. Can he get him off of his feet? And that's where you see that defense showing up one more time. Heavy hips. And they wrestle at the edge. DeSanto now to his feet. But limited real estate for the Hawkeye, and they're out of bounds. But yeah. that's what DeSanto has to do. Yeah, this is the adjustment DeSanto made. He decides to go to the other leg, the fireman's carry side. He just wasn't able to come up with the, the, the shot. Now he's coming to the leg he wants. So he's attacked to both sides. This is a interesting position here for DeSanto because RBY here. has that Win dixie move where he can take you right to your back. Against a guy like RBY, Jim, we've seen DeSanto get to the legs twice, but how does he finish? He's got to be able to get his shoelaces up and drive through the man, and that's so tough because he, RB Weiss just stops your first move, and he's just got really just a heavy hips, great motion. You never get that clean look at him. But right now is an opportunity for DeSanto to go ahead and really put some weight on that head, tire him out in ways, get him in positions that he hasn't experienced a lot this of here, here. gentlemen. Work Stuck through this. the head, go hard. DeSanto with a heavy pace here in this first period. Crowd getting behind him. This is one versus three in the country. RBY, the national champion, beating Dayton Fix of Oklahoma State. One more Four time. Two. Here he goes again. Will the third time be the charm for DeSanto? And a single leg. He's got to keep moving RBY if he does, which he didn't do now. Now he's in a worse position here, being down on his knees. As he comes out the back door, he switches to double. And he's going to settle in this position for the stalemate. Looks like it. Rossi DeSanto having some words with the officials. Yep. I think it's about the ankle tie that he's taking right there. And now the intensity is picking up. Well, he's feeding off this crowd, Shane. You said it, Jim. Get 15,000 friends to support you. Half a minute here in this first period. Some good action. We're scoreless. But DeSanto, with a few shots, he's gotten to the legs of RBY, but hasn't been able to finish. These two met in the Big Ten final at State College. RBY beating DeSanto for the third straight time after losing the first two. There's a stall call at RBY. I think that's a great call. DeSanto has been the aggressor in this situation. Now they're looking for that ankle back. See how, so they're going to end, but that was a great sequence there by Austin DeSanto. There's Tom Brands to Sheldon. Sheldon Iowa native in his 16th year in 14 tournaments. Four team national titles. They've taken on 12 trophies, six Big Ten championships. Great first period by Austin Santa was clearly an aggressor in the first period. And this is where Roman Bravo Young has really improved, but that's great news for the Sando getting that quick escape. Inside of 10 seconds, the Hawkeye is on the board. See that wizard position from Harvey Wise. They wrestle near the edge. He's able to scoop the leg. Can he improve his position from here? Keep it legal. Keep it legal. DeSanto hunting for the head. He'll go back into that front headlock. But these front headlock moves are pretty good, Shane. They'll get ahead and stuff the guy's head. Make him breathe a little harder. 
Get him out of his pace. DeSanto, a three-time All-American. He was third at the national tournament. A little bit early that time was the Hawkeye's first caution. I really, at this stage of the match, I really expect Roman Bravo Young to, what's his go-to shot right now? What is he feeling out there? Because he hasn't hit any offense. He's just trying to solely go off of the offense, play defense here, roll around, create scrambles. Familiar position. DeSanto, though, stalled again. That's a stalemate. Again, with this type of action, in these circumstances, with this crowd, you can get that stall warning. He's already got one against RBY. And the crowd knows that. That activity level has all been in the favor of DeSanto. Again, does RBY have an answering shot? Right now, right now, it doesn't look like he's hunting for it. Red! Red! There's the second call on RBY. Another point for DeSanto. He leads it 2-0. Head stuff, you see this ankle roll legal. right there. The adjustment that DeSanto has made has been able to keep those ankles clean. Going to try to roll through and create a scramble, but DeSanto doing a nice job of staying in position. You can just see how comfortable RBY is here. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Potentially hey, dangerous don't call. Don't around, okay? And don't trust me, there's been again. conversations with the officials. I'm just presuming that they've okay. had conversations with the officials about DeSanto in the way he covers and grabs those ankles. Tom Brands up on his feet, yelling at J.R. Johnson, the outside official. Here's RBY. There it is. Just Down. like that, he ties it up at two. Yeah. Now can he finish period on top? So important because Sando gets out here. It's tie match. And this is where he's been able to improve. 2-2 two, two to the third period. Let's take a look at this Roman Bravo Young takedown. Just an elbow shuck right there. What he does when he gets you off balance right there, he runs to the right. He's as good as anybody in the country. He just hey, Mark, ran to that single balls, leg. Okay? You got two Such a balls. quick finish yes, from RBY. So smooth and fluid. Set. Yeah, just a beautiful just elbow pass and then just running towards it. Very similar to what he was able to hit. To Santo in the, in the finals of the national tournament. Early in this period. Committed in the top position again. RBY, two stall calls against him already. Riding time and on factor. It's a non factor as far as where it is right now, but the Santo can really help his stock right now by maybe getting riding time during this sequence here. I don't think he wants to let him up right now. He wants to stay in the top position. He has the ability to collect some riding time already up to 9, 10 seconds. Getting a little bit high though. And RBY is right back in on the shot. Could Still be a green. reversal. Still green. Still green in control. No points Still yet. Still green in control. One right. Santo gets out of it. So escape. And he's right back in on the shot. There's DeSanto again. He trails it by one with 110 to go. Oh, Underneath Bravo. those hips of RBY. Exactly, Shane. Dropping that hammer on those hips on the button. You see DeSanto's in a little bit worse position than he was before after that shot. Stay There's just off that second move here. once he gets to the leg. He's got to move quickly. One point match here at 133. A matchup of one and three in the country. DeSanto trying to knock off the reigning national champion. And this is the part of the match where you stay disciplined with your strategy. Not giving that tie up to DeSanto, not putting him in that position. Staying in the middle of the mat, looking for your offense. It's too early to go defense. 35 seconds. Hard collar tie from the Hawkeye. Easy with those hands. If the Sandal can take a little bit more forward territory, he might be able to get that call. RBY staying center of the mat, maintaining territory. A couple of half shots there from the Santo. Really, RBY has not moved out of the center. Now he drops back into a shot. Great time to get on his offense and close out this match in on a leg. He's going to hold on to that. Right leg, and Roman Bravo Young. That second period takedown was critical, and he remains undefeated. Ample good hands first. All right. Couple words exchanged by Roman Bravo Young and Austin DeSanto. This is all good. Knew it was going to be a fight. Exactly. All good. Our Perler feature match comes at 141 pounds. Feature match brought to you by Perler Wrestling College Recruiting Services. Jim.
Grab the popcorn. Showtime at 141. Shane, this is the one I was looking forward to here, the, the adjustments there. Jaden, the Riddler, Eiderman, really got solved last year in the national finals by Nick Lee. And Nick Lee has got to get sets. better since that time. But you know what? There's history between these two. And this, the guy who goes out there and, and wins the scrambles is probably going to win this match. Hard to believe these two met at the NCAA Championships in 2018. It was Ironman, a major decision, 12-4. In that Big Ten final last March, Ironman winning at 6-5 with a riding time point. And then two takedowns, one in sudden victory for Nick Lee. And when you speak about Nick Lee, Jim, you refer to shallow shots because Ironman likes you to be deep. Yeah, he does. He wants you to go ahead. He wants to take you into deep water. He wants you to get, drive in on that right leg of his. He cuts the corner so well. And the adjustment that Lee has made is been able to go ahead, take a more shallow shot, switch to a double, get an inside trip there for a finish in the national finals here to win it in sudden victory. So look for Lee to go ahead and continue that momentum, that pace. And I, I look in this match, the adjustments will be the national finals, Ironman went out there and chased Lee hard. Straight on doubles, two or three times. And really kind of wore himself out in that match. I don't expect that in this situation. I expect a more calm, cool, collected Ironman. Couple attacks exchanged. Ironman and Lee, both four-time All-Americans. And the thing about Lee, Shane, is that, that he really puts a lot of forward pressure, really works your head hard, and when he finishes, he can finish with his head on both sides of the body. So it's really difficult for, to cut the corner on him. He's made great adjustments and improvements in his wrestling style and his finishes. Picked up his 100th victory against Lehigh. 106 and 13 for his career. 80 of those victories. Bonus points. He's caught underneath. Shot by Ironman. Good for both wrestlers right there. Shot by Ironman. Getting the leg back. It looked like that was a tight fireman's carry, but it also good for Lee because got back to the neutral position. He can hunt and peck and stay on the attack. Ironman, the four-time conference champion, three-time MAC champion for the Missouri Tigers, and of course beating Lee to claim the title in the Big Ten. Ironman out of Columbia, Missouri, Nick Lee, Evansville, Indiana. 45 seconds here in this first period. Penn State leads it 7-0. They got a major decision from Drew Hildebrandt at 125. Roman Bravo Young in a tight one. He nipped Austin DeSanto. Nice reactions there by Ironman to that uh, sweet little drag there that Nick Lee did. Again, if you can't lift up and go for the attack, you go ahead and go around it with that arm drag. These two guys are, particularly Lee, is really good at getting that subtle little angle before his shot. Right there, see now he's off, off to the side a little bit. and see if he's able to do something here. Short time. Short time, gentlemen. Short See, he's time. off to the side with it, and he drops in on the leg anyway. He's just, that's what he is. He's just looking, always looking for that angle to take that better shot. Lee and Ironman a scoreless Richard. first period. Cal Sanderson in his 13th season at Penn State in 11 national tournaments. They've hoisted that championship trophy eight times. They've won the Big Ten title six times, of course, as an athlete's 159 and 0 undefeated for the Cyclones of Iowa State as a four-time national champion, Olympic gold medalist, an Olympic gold medalist in both corners here tonight. Well, he's the Olympic gold medalist in calm, you know, and that's, you, know, you couldn't have a better guy to bring a team in and have them, you know, give the best version of themselves because he's just so calm there in that corner. And the guys go out there and perform for him. Nick Lee, that return, going to work on top. Yeah, Talk about calm, Nick Lee is calm also. Yeah. His feet off that energy, always trying to improve their wrestling positions. Good adjustment there Still by alive, Lee Still alive to here. get that right foot back inside the circle. He's building riding time now past 30 seconds. And this is really important for him because this gives him the opportunity to, you know, go in the down position if he chooses to, if he collects no riding time, you know. He choose, actually choose neutral. And that's what he did in the national final. He never went on bottom. Right. That was the difference from the Big Ten final. And so it's the concept we talk about a lot. You ride the rider, right? And we know that Ironman very tough in the top position. Jack Green, red and top. The first time that they wrestled in the Big Ten Championships, it was about that Matt wrestling. He got riding time. And a quick escape is really what he needs to do right now. Comes back up. And that's the way you do it, right? Threaten the man with something up top and upper bodies circling back into him. And, and they give, Lee just gave up the position. 
Ironman, second period escape, leads it 1-0. Ironman at the national tournament has finished fifth, fourth, third, and second. Will this be the year he makes that final step to the top? There's a throw from Ironman. And Lee able to roll through. Wow. wow. No control, gentlemen. He's going to go through it again. He's got that chest wrap, and then two, oh, take too, that. too much of a gamble at that point in time, and Lee was able to adjust to it and get the double leg. Ron. Huge sequence there. Now he's back to riding, really putting Ironman in a bad spot. Five to one. Ironman, he went for it. And against a guy like Nick Lee, he's just so Ron. good. Neutral. Maintains such great position, We're center. awareness. We're center. And the advantage time is at 111 here, so don't expect Lee to go down. You know, Probably has an opportunity. Oh, new beautiful shallow shot right there at the edge, and he collects two, the two. Two more for Nick Lee, and he gets it with a second left in the period. Let's take a look at those takedowns there. That was just a beautiful sequence there. Look at this. Ironman almost has him right there, but Lee continues to roll, gets his belt buckle down to the mat again, squares up, and in this chest wrap position, Ironman's gambling. He's looking for the big move. Not against Nick Lee. He's just too well-schooled. He keeps his hips back. Coach Gable with the reaction. <laughs> that picture said it all. Lee up by two. He's got riding time at 111, and he's exactly where he wants to be on his feet. The old coach saw what a lot of people did. You didn't have to go for that second one, but well, that's the type of wrestler Center. that Ironman is. He's always looking for the big moves, and he, he had the element of surprise on the first one. The second one, not so much. Nick Lee reminds me of a great pitcher. It's going to be tough to hit a bunch of home runs off of him. You've got to play some ABC baseball, in this case, ABC fundamental wrestling to beat him. Yeah, and now he's got to go back to that strategy that he had in the first, uh, the, the national finals match, where he's got to probably dive in on some double legs, take some space shots, create some some uh, action where he can you know, look for something big. If he can get a takedown, Jim, and take 11 seconds of riding time off, we'd have ourselves a tie match. And that's, again, you just got to get the first one. And create more activity. These Penn State wrestlers, actually every wrestler here in this match so far has been right there in the middle. They're not playing the edge My at time. all. Hey, 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 come here, come here, come here. Nick Lee, mad awareness, butt to the center. Stay in that black circle. And again, Move not your putting, feet. yeah, again, Shane, not putting too okay. much weight into your opponent here, keeping your own balance. And when you're hold, trying to hold the lead, don't lean into your opponent. Don't reach and lean. Looking for Ironman to increase his activity level. This is the time where he has to go. He's got to kind of create something. Space shot. His defense from Lee, some fix by the Nittany Lion. Heavy pressure on that collar tie right there on the back of his head. Staying in his stance. He's a full foot below him right now. And he gets going to take down. He's got a chance to get a four sudden victory. Absolutely. as he erases riding time. <laughs> what a huge sequence there by Ironman to get himself back in the match there. Both these guys in short time. We saw Lee in the second period. Ironman here at the end of regulation. A takedown and a ride out. 4-4. Four, four. If he here waits two more overtime. seconds, Jim, he runs out of time and he loses by one. Yep. Quick and shot off the whistle. Right into that double leg we talked about. There, but Lee's able to go around behind and he gets the quick takedown. Eight seconds into sudden victory, a takedown from Nick Lee to silence this Hawkeye crowd. Right. Took him to the limit. Looked like he was almost ready to give it away. Let's go back to the end of regulation and take a look at this takedown by Ironman. Take a look at it. Elbow pass and really caught Lee kind of backing out instead of kind of a reattacking there. Caught him backing out, choosing the wrong direction. And, and at that point, hanging on for dear life. Breaking the riding time, going to overtime. But what a great job by Nick Lee getting right back on his office. And here's the winning takedown. Reaction, stuffs his head. Lead it as we head to 165 pounds, the three-time Big Ten champion. The Bull, Alex Marinelli, now ranked fifth in the country. 
and Brady Berge for Penn State. Marinelli with just one loss here inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. He's 22 and one all time. A big six point throw from Vincenzo Joseph. Familiar between these two. I tell you what, that was a great war between those guys. Vincenzo Joseph getting the nice throw right there, but right, you know, it, it took here a two time go. national champion to get a Six. win over Marinelli in this building here. He's been tough all throughout his career. Marinelli coming off a loss to Carson Harshla of Ohio State, his first loss of the season. That was a 3 2 match. Just one loss here in Carver, 22 and one all time. He's been a staple in this Iowa lineup, three time All American. And look for Marinelli to really control the pace, go forward here, not only the pull pressure on the head, I look for him to go ahead and try to take a lot of territory and get his Center! opponent to go ahead and Center! lean into him a little bit more with that heavy collar tie and hit that post and get to a shot. Man, there's there a stall call. There's the, there's the adjustment, Shane, taking territory. The Hawks weren't taking territory, even in those matches where they were favored here. Expect Marinelli to get right on there with a the forward pressure. If I would have told you, Jim, two months ago that tonight it'd be Brady Berge for Penn State, what would you think about that? <laughs> I go, well, he's in Brookings, South Dakota. How's that going to happen? That's where he was an assistant coach there. For Damian Hahn, Jack Rabbits. Got an opportunity to come back, and there's right there on the oh. show. Center! Skipping away is Berge. Center! Showing a little bit of uh, old coaching skills right there. You know, you become a coach, all of a sudden you learn all the tricks really quick in the last six Center! months. Just scoots out of that single leg attempt. Marinelli, heavy hands, always a lot of pressure on the head, pulling. Yeah, Berge coaching at South Dakota State. Damian Hahn. Saw that he had the itch, they had some conversations, and he's back at State College. Keep it center, drops it keep it center. Yeah, drops in the leg. A big step right there. It kind of got out of balance there with that big step. You know, you don't want to be that there, right there back in on the shot one more time. He shelves the legs. A little bit better position right now to close it out. Hunts and he collect, that ankle. Two, yeah, collects the far two. ankle and gets the two. Marinelli with a first period takedown. I believe that's the first for the Hawkeyes. Ooh, it's the first in the meet. Third takedown of the duel for Iowa. Mirren had one, Set red. as did Jaden Ironman. Interesting to see what the choice is right now with Marinelli. He's going to go ahead and try to stay in the top position. Not really known as one of those guys that's going to go out there and you know turn you over, but he will come out to the side here, a little double trouble, bear hug type situation, take, try to take him from his feet to his back in the mat return. Berge tripoding. Pinching that right side, now scooping up the near ankle, the Hawkeye. And one thing about getting a little riding time in this situation, Shane, you can sense whether your opponent is breathing, you know, if he's okay, whether he has that level of strength, I mean, what, or what techniques are gonna work, and a good mat return right there. Every time you do something like that, you get a feel for your opponent's position in the match and his intensity and his willingness to compete. And now 25 seconds away from finishing this period on top. Hey, still live here at the end. Difference Gentleman between Russell two here. nothing and two one. Got to get greedy right here if you're Marinelli. Berge looking to creep outside, get himself a fresh start. Smash down one more time. <laughs> There's his wife, Mariah Marinelli, director of operations here at Iowa. She's oh. into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Green, hold on. Tense. Hold on, Green, hold on. Hold I'd on. like to know Set what her red, final message top. is to the bull Set. when he toes the line. She's tough. Uh, she's got a red cape. <laughs> Go out there and charge. Solid first period for Marinelli. A takedown. Finishes period on top. Right at 118. Let's take a look at his first takedown. Drops in, a little bit better position. Hey, Red's got one right. stall call here. Berge gets Green away set. from a little bit further, Red. just going out there collecting that far ankle. And I like the choice here, Jim, for Marinelli, not deferring, but going on bottom. Yeah. Your lead. The reason why I like that, too, is because you just changed the perception of the match right now. All of a sudden, you had the choice. You go down. You know, if you're on top right there, you know, you may give up a stall warning or something like that. You really don't want to be there. Quick escape, though, gets him right back in and on the action, so technically he's got a 4-0 lead with the riding time holds. Alex Marinelli 
Remember, most bonus of the time, points be big. Yeah, most of the time when you're looking for bonus, you're going to need at least you're going to need ride outs. You need three to four takedowns. He's got one already. Along with those three Big Ten crowns, he's a three-time Midlands champion. And Berge, you know, I look at his situation right now. It's an opportunity for him to go ahead and steal one. If you got a guy hunting a major on you, all of a sudden you get aggressive. You get a guy getting too, uh, you know, too much forward action. Go for it. It's time for him to hit his go-to shot to stay in this match. Halfway through this second period, Berge out of Casson Manorville was a three-time state champion. Been to the NCAA tournament a couple of times, looking to be an All-American. And right now, you can get one more takedown in effect by just going ahead and pushing forward and maybe getting Berge backing up but backing out a little bit, following it up here, maybe get a stall warning. He's already got one, does Berge. Next one will be a point. And this is where the crowd Center. gets involved. Center! That underhook trying to jack him up. Red, and there's that second stall call a point for the Hawkeye. Taking territory in these big dual meets is huge. If you can go ahead and do it, you get the referee on your side, you get your crowd behind Fix. you. These are the points that visiting coaches don't like to give up. Hey, stay off the fingers. Guys wrestling center of the mats. Late in the second. Marinelli, two points in the first, two more here in the second. And he'll take a 4-0 lead to the final period. It was a good period by Marinelli. You know, there wasn't too much scoring there, but he got the escape and he got the stall point. It's one less takedown he has as he tries to hunt for a major decision to get Red, that you point back. Calls here. You think he tries to turn him, Jim? Top, or no, I, I want to be on his feet. I think, I think he's going to try to be patient in the top position and I don't see much action from the corner telling him to let him up, right? It's like, do you have the ability to turn this man, or can you get two or three takedowns? Marinelli with 24 pins in his career. Again, a lot of them Both are men, after he's kind of worn the guy Both down men. a little bit, gets double trouble on him. Again, you got to be thinking bonus points. You know where you are here. You know what this means to this your team right there, three-quarter Nelson, right there. Worms. That was he's trying to do. There's the escape. Neutral. Hustling back to the center is Marinelli. The slower walk from the Nittany Lions. Hey, let's Berge. keep it in the center. Still a long way to go, a minute 20. Is Marinelli going to take the territory? He's going to follow it up with some shots. He's coming hard with that collar tie. Berge holding in there fairly well. There's a shot. Center! Going to follow center! it up. Berge's got to be careful. Here's a single leg for Marinelli at the edge. Another takedown he's got. Yep. And you want to ditch it right here. You want to get off the mat here. You don't want to waste a lot of time if you're hunting a major. No action. And the referee kind of bails him out of that position. Actually, Marinelli was in bounds. Now he goes to the neutral position. Gives the intentional release. This is the way to do it. The riding time is locked up. A takedown and a rider would give the major. And this is the type of pace that you are known for. And if you're Berge, of course, just fight. You can't give up that takedown. Hard snap from the bull and out of bounds. <laughs> Another point for Marinelli. The bull is just getting points right now for going, you know, taking him straight off. But those are kind of dual meat calls. But this puts him in a position to be able to go ahead and get a takedown and get the major. If you're Berge, you've got to circle in. Another deep shot, single leg. And he's got it. And the major decision is 14 seconds away for Marinelli. Carver Hawkeye is alive. Alex Marinelli put him right back in it with that bonus point move and look at him go. There's that big smile. Have ourselves a new match. 10-10, here's that last takedown and ride out to secure the major for the bull. Well, the bull dug deep right here on this one, got it again, got to that leg, 
And Berge just kind of bailed out on it right there, but I think that was the heavy pressure that he was able to put in on the first period. And you're right, that was two. 174 pounds. These two men in the Big Ten final was Kemmer, 7-2, and then Storacci. A double leg to win it for the national crown. In that Big Ten final, Kemmer, a four-point flurry to close the second period. It really made the difference in this match, but, you know, Kemmer has always been the guy that's had the heavy hits. He's always been the guy that ended up being on top in the scramble. In the NCAA tournament, the, the match pace just wasn't the same. There wasn't the energy in the building as well, Shane. He had 2,500 people in attendance, and sometimes it's just a little bit different. Kemmer used to wrestling in this type of environment. This is going to be a lot of fun because Carter hey, Storacci has done nothing but get better in that Penn State wrestling room since the last time they met. Michael Kemmer, 25 and one all time here inside Carver Hawkeye. That loss, Jim, in January of 2017, it's over five years ago. That was the Jason <laughs> Nolf done at 157 yeah, over this, five years ago. This will be a battle. One and two in the country. Locking horns here at 174, the duel 10-10. Kimmer, four-time All-American. Storacci, impressive as the 2021 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Capped it off with the national title. And as you said, Jim, another year in that Penn State room. Expect big gains from Storacci. And they've just done that. He's just continued to get better. And you take a look at him. He's, he's taking territory in his matches, in and out. He's diving in on those legs. And I think one thing that was discounted right there is just how good right here he is in finishing. Or, or just getting back to a neutral position. He can take risk, and he comes back, and I think he's extremely strong in his core. Really difficult to take down. Great balance. I was talking to David Taylor about Carter in, in, in the Penn State wrestling room, and really impressed with this young man's work ethic, how he goes about his business every day, trying to improve. He's serious about wrestling. He had a gritty national tournaments he was the number three seed in the semis he knocked off the number two seed demetrius romero of utah valley two nothing here's Storacci. single leg double leg great job by camera squaring his hips up just sinking down getting a little bit better it looks like he was most no, guys get taken down right there let's face it and we are back to our feet hip defense Fingers, from Kemmer to keep this zero zero and again, in the Big Tens, Kemmerer was able to get to his shots. A great flurry. The timing of Storacci has been pretty impressive as well. It looked like Storacci had him, but Kemmerer and those hips. Nice Storacci. shot there again. Got a left-handed shot right there. A little crack down here. He's pretty solid with this roll to attempt, right? The no battle control. is the left arm no right control. there by Storacci. And now the hips. The strong hips, now the shin whizzer. Incredible no defense from here, Kimmer. Gentlemen. Just over 30 seconds, first period, the Hawkeye able to square up. High level, guys. Put that on the tape right there. Fingers, let him go, let Jim, him go. what does it do as an athlete when you give a guy like Kimmer two really good attacks and you can't score? Well, you just, you know what? You just keep going, right? You just keep going. You don't get frustrated about that. Actually, you gain confidence that you were able to go ahead and get in there. You just got to make a few adjustments, and maybe later in the match it'll open up. But for Kemmerer, boy, he's really fought off really hard and really well. Incredible defense right there by Kemmerer. Here's the defense from Kemmerer. Look at the fight right there. Double leg. Most guys go, but see how active his legs are there? He pops up. He keeps his shoelaces flat here, drops his hips on him. Chest up once again. Gets cracked down right here. Now the left arm, right? Look at the left arm of Strachi. Most spies get that across. He was able to block that off, shove the head to the inside. Great defense there by Kemmerer. Incredible. One neutral. Quick escape from Strachi is Kemmerer. And that's content the thing. to give him the escape. You know, Shane, that's the thing that's been impressive about, impressive about Strachi is that he does all the little things well that you don't see. I mean, creating those flurries and all that, but, but getting out quickly. Quick escape, one nothing, Storacci. This is a pace, the way this match is going. Again, Kemmer has not been able to get to the legs of, of Storacci. Once he does, he's good at cracking down. But 
Sirachi's been the one to get to the, the shot, so look, this is the time in the match right now where I think that, that Kenner really has to come forward and show what he has on his feet. Look for him to take a little risk. Very similar to that national final. Yep. Right green! There, once again, green styling, green! Stall warning right there. A little bit better finish right there. Now he's finishing no below. Control. One more time in on the shin whizzer. He jumps off that shin whizzer. Starachi coming up hard. He's Easy. got an opportunity to go ahead and roll through. Kemmerer has the no near control. leg. Nobody's now he gets control. a little bit of elevation. Can he come Nobody's back into it? Kemmerer looking for a takedown. Probably going to get into a stalemate situation. Here, we'll see how long they let him wrestle. At the key time there, Sirachi got a little bit of elevation himself. Notice how he's gotten his head up stalemate. and got a better okay. position to create a stalemate. So, wow. Go, I'm breathless, Shane. Ahead. This has been easy, a easy. lot of great action. Let's go. Back to neutral. It is a 1-0 match. Set. So, adjustment there by Sirachi. Looking to fingers, kill Sanders. Fingers, gentlemen. Fingers. Let him go. With the let him go. Tie, then go into his shot. Let's see if he... Right there, there's the collar tie for Strachi. And these sequences have been right there. Here's his best opportunity on a single leg. Does he have enough time? Ten seconds left for Kemmerer. A lot of pressure there from Strachi. No control, we're gonna gentlemen, go one no nothing control. to the third. I like that finish Three attempt, choice. though. You see how he tried to gator roll off of that? So Nico Megalutis from Penn State did that move a lot, get on the leg, make a little roll like that, and then try to attack the far leg. Iowa, you got There's one stall Lugo. call here, okay? Was the number one seed. He's got one stall call. He does. In 2020 Set. tournament did red. not happen, unfortunately, for Pat Lugo. I tell you All-American. It's just a shame of what happened with those That's Pat Lugo and you know, Luke Fletcher, Colin Moore, Vincenzo, and Mark Hall. Look at that flurry. Starachi no, no, stays no, no. right with him. Two, he's got the ankles. Now he's going to work up. That is a great job of following here. He's collecting riding time. Tough work in the top position from Starachi as the challenge brick is whipped across the mat hey. by Tom Brands. And I don't know what the uh, what they'd be asking for here. Perhaps a, a locked hand. Possibly hands. locked yep. hands. Yep, around the, the legs. On the dive. And Tom Brands yes. threw that at about 87 miles per hour <laughs> with 100% conviction. And we've seen over the years when Tom Brands challenges, he knows he knows the rules, yeah. and he's successful more than most. He is. Take a look at what they're looking at. These riding situations. Start, okay, jumps out. We're going to get a look at the hands. I think it's going to be down low if it did occur. Right there. Does he have his hands locked at that point? I don't think. It doesn't look like he does. But See the brick the other, flying through? The other thing, okay, he's on his feet. Looks like the arms are split. You can't, doesn't really, can't really tell from that point. Again, Kimmer makes the big turn, but he can't keep any elevation. His head goes to the mat. Right, locked at that point. We lost the feed there, but each team with one challenge. If you lose that challenge, it's over. You know, and it's. it's I'm not saying that this is part of it, but you know, you, this is an important sequence here for Kemmer. I don't think it hurts them them to go through this challenge. Maybe Strachi lo lost his, his or blocked his hands right there, but it also gives you a chance to recollect yourself a little bit and think about the bottom wrestling. Let's see if. Take one more look at it. Down. I haven't seen it. Yeah, we After we further really review, the call stands. It. No locked hands. Reds on top. Green's down. Yeah. Regardless, though, a little more perspiration. Right? You've been sitting around there for a minute here. A little more flush. Right? You hold get red. Hold red. Keep Set the green. pace up. On top. And it's hard to ride a guy when it's this warm in here. In this situation, now Kemmer coming out using those hips. Goes with an underhook. How strong is Tarachi to keep that going for the longer he did? 1-1. One, one. So Iowa Center, is out of Center. challenges for the remainder of this duel. Penn State still has their challenge brick in hand. So Iowa cannot challenge any more calls. Of course, the officials, at their discretion, can elect to review a call. 
Both wrestlers have been so close on their attacks. Each with an escape. Clock shows 60 seconds here in regulation. Starachi's been the closest on his feet. No question about it, but is he, is he willing to go back in there and battle those hips in the third period? There's a little misdirection there by Starachi. I like what he's trying to do there. Fake from Kemmerer. Kemmerer's the guy that he drops back in the leg. Counter shot there by Starachi, but he got the head stuffed a little bit. Kemmerer does. And this is what's been amazing to me watching Carter Strauch develop in his career no, is that he neutral. does not, just not give up those easy go-behinds. He fights hard positions as hard as anybody in the country. There is no hey, quits, no give from Starachi. Yeah. Here yeah. comes the crowd, and there's the Nittany line head to the outside on a single leg, but the hips from Kimmerer. He's got the grip broke. Now he jumps in on the leg. Can he knock him down? 15 seconds. Shelfing the leg. A roll from Starachi as they no scramble control. late in regulation. No, no points. And at 174, uh, how fitting. Yeah. There's a side victory. Out. And the timer, a little time issue right there. At one point in time, the time, the clock was frozen at six seconds. So I'm assuming that they'll be able to just run this out and they'll end up going to overtime after a short break. Starachi and Kimber. Again, who does this favor? I don't know, but you know, Starachi was in on that shot, and I thought for just for a second that Kimber was able to split that grip and then the roll through right at the end. Boy, these guys are going at it. Not conceding Overtime. anything, Shane. Such a fight. So typical of these two great programs. Will they should so win. go right to overtime. Yeah. Take a look at this, and for some reason, we had a clock stoppage at about the six second mark. Yeah. Misinterpretation of the official's call. And then they started again, and they ended up in that position. That this is the new rule that they could go ahead and get back and make a Gentlemen, quick we adjustment. have overtime. Seven Green, victory. Got two minutes on the clock. Shot. Fingers, let him go. Both with an escape. Loving this new rule of the two minute on the feet. Sudden victory. Who's going to take the chance and get right after it? Her finger clasp hey, right now. Let him go, let him go. Let's go, Hawks. The chant by the Hawkeye faithful. Can Michael Kimmer put Iowa out in front? I like what Starachi's doing. He's getting, he's getting in that kind of a boxing stance here. He's forcing him to move his feet here, creating a little activity. Let's go, gentlemen. It was a double leg that won him the national title in St. Louis. A 3-1 victory in that national final. It'll be interesting to see whether Kemmerer just goes right back at it. You know, he's the best in the, probably in the country that when you go to start your he's shot, he's leaning into his. Right there. Below right. the knee. Right there. He's going to be able to go ahead and do it. He's got his left leg. And he's going to elevate right here. If he can elevate, he puts himself in the Merkel position right there where he laces that no near control. leg and gets the head and arm. He'll score. No control. He's trying to creep in that no right control. arm. No control. Look out. Look, look for no the left control. toe right there. You can't do that. That's potentially dangerous. He's got to catch that quicker. No control. Really, in that situation with the left ankle right there, Kemmerer was fortunate here because Tarachi was really working it hard against the joint. Hey, lay those old so fingers. Let him go. Thirty seconds. What's it going to be? There's a shot from Tarachi. And in that single leg, head stuff to the inside. Cameron now has him flat. Can he slide that ankle no out? Control. Final this 10 time. seconds, can he get no it? Control, behind the ankle, no behind the arms. Does he had the no locked up there with a workal position. Doesn't look no like control. it. He gets oh, he the takedown. Did he beat the clock? That's the question. I believe he did.
The referees, I think, believe are going to take a look at this. So this Merkel position that they're in, the head and arm, and if you have the near leg lace right there, it should be no, a takedown. Should be a takedown. But I don't know if it happened during right during the uh, sudden victory time. Right there, he's pretty much got it locked up right there, head and arm. He gives the two at that point. My question to you, Jim, is I didn't see anything change in those final seconds. It looked like the same position with three, four uh, after seconds. After further left, review, as it was with one second. no time we'll was on the it, clock. Yeah. No time. No takedown. I and think that's a good call. Up. I really do. I think that's a good call. The two off the board. We're back to 1-1. One, one. Camera with choice. He'll be first. Arachi going on bottom. The riding time erased. This is where every single second counts in this top position. Every second. Set. Both these guys sweat dripping. They got to be exhausted. Quick stand up. Coming up underneath, now adjusting his camera. Camera on, didn't want to stay with the position, so Strachi able to get the quick escape. That surprised you? A little bit, yeah. But, you know, it's going to look for Strachi just to take that advantage into the next position and try to go ahead and see if he can do the right out. Hey, let go of those fingers, right gentlemen. To get going. I'm surprised he didn't get a little more gritty on top. Yeah, well, I, I think. We're looking Green at a young man that has a shoulder brace and all, all that. It's really tough to ride a guy when you've got something maybe ailing you in that position. So saving some energy here for the bottom position. 15,000 getting behind Michael Kemmerer. Explosive stand up, but Starachi stays with him, snakes in his right leg. Nice change over right there. He's got the hand covered. If you can go ahead and continue to get the hips out, you don't have to hand fight. You just got to keep moving. One, two, Look at three, the power from Starachi. four, five. We'll come back into him. There's a stall warning. We're getting a count. One green. We lock. Now there's a... One point offered up One there. I think it's a, either, is it a Excuse locked me. hands call or a stall warning? Angel Rivera and J.R. Johnson discussing. That was only the first. Yeah, the first stall call on the drop down. Hey, hey, You see when the official is grabbing. The wristband right there is asking for the riding okay, time to stop. Get off the mat, get off the mat. But the net result is we only have five seconds left here for Kemmer to try to get out. So, Sirachi in a good position to be able to close out this match and pull off an upset. It is Not heated. an upset, he's the number one. Right yeah. Now. It's not an upset anymore. He's the returning national champion. Everybody is into this one. Both coaches, corners. What, what poise that both of these guys have shown in this match, the scrambles, Particular Carter Starachi here being able to get the quick escape. That was so critical. Starachi was offensive, wasn't able to finish shots, yeah. but he was on the legs more. No he's doubt. He's been tougher in the tough position. And, the and, that, and he's kept the pace of the match up high enough You're here not, that he's been the one that's been able to weather Kemmerer instead of the other way around. Oh, five okay. seconds on the clock. Carter Storacci. Nothing. Nothing. With a no supreme green. effort. Match is over. Iowa. A little problem with the clock again here in the building. This is 42 seconds, but Carter Storacci wins a big one for the Lions. 2 1 final. The escape. And then the ride out. Here's the final five seconds. Nice job by. Yeah, clock malfunction. It went to 50 seconds, but five seconds clearly 
off the clock, and Carter Starachi. What a tough victory oh, for the young Nittany line to put Penn State back out in front. 16-10, Penn State out in front. As we shift our attention to 197 pounds, another top five matchup, Jacob Warner for the Hawkeyes, Max Dean ranked number two in the country for the Nittany Lions. Dean 12 and one, he fell to Cameron Caffey last Sunday. In East Lansing, three to two, his first loss of the season. One ninety-seven and heavyweight. The Hawkeyes they trail it by six. They'll need some theatrics to knock off Penn State. Warner's been third at the Big Tens on three occasions. The three-time Illinois State champion from Tolono, Illinois, wrestled at Washington High School down in Southern Illinois. And who knows with this hundred ninety-seven pound weight class, really what we're looking at here? These it just it seems like. Everybody from second rank guys, and of course, AJ Ferrari with the about guys. you and, and, and uh, the uh, situation that you're in here. And, and I'm sure you're watching this, and we would like this for your speedy recovery. But the, uh, these guys, this weight class is much more balanced than it was last year. Got some guys coming back off of uh, red shirts out of the portal, and it's, it's wide open. And you could be seeing a match like this in the constellations at some point in time in the NCAA tournament that has would go a long way to settling who's going to be the team champion. 197 in the Big Ten, five of the top ten. Cameron Caffey into the top ten after his big weekend. But it's a tough weight class, and when you look at the national landscape and the national tournament, this weight class is going to definitely play a key role in deciding who's taking home trophies. Yeah, she's Shane, 15 and, and the three-seater. <laughs> what difference is it? So... It'll be great. And in this match, you know, Dean, NCAA runner-up, 184 pounds. He knows how to get the legs. Really good at finishing. And that's what Warner does right there. Able to get the takedown. Good counterattack from Warren. And a mad return out of bounds. I'm going to tell you what, Shane. You have changed college wrestling by giving so much <laughs> emphasis to the mat return these guys are going for it they I want love it, it. we've <laughs> seen some great ones here tonight tip of the cap man in tough matches jim <laughs> those difficult things make a big no, difference they, yep and who was good at mat returns jim gibbons could <laughs> mat return back in the day that was an excellent job by warner there getting that short angle and that's what he's always been able to do, or that's always impressed me to be able to win the tight matches, is stay in that top position. When he makes his mind up to ride a guy, he's really effective. And with 41 seconds, here we go again. Can you find a way to make that 2 nothing score stand? If you do, you'll have riding time in a minute. And he knows how to, he's got these struck out of that position right there. He's, you see the right elbow came back and Really made that grip really hard, but Warner was able to make the adjustment by coming into the crotch right there and taking Dean back to the mat. Now we're down to 27 seconds. Oftentimes, 40, 50 seconds, it might take two or three goes. 15 Absolutely. seconds here, 15 seconds there. This dual meet has not disappointed. You knew there'd be a lot of great individual battles, and that has played out. Look at the adjustment that Warner is making. He's getting that crotch there and running it here. Trying to keep weight on the hands. Dean's doing a good job of coming up, One, but he he finds himself in the two, switch position. Three, Who's going to get that? So it's an advantage position five. here for Dean. Scrambling in the final seconds of the first period. And I think he's got he's points gotta right there. He's got to be careful. Well, I think that that position was favored Dean. That's the win Dixie. They're going to go here ahead. Here comes the brick. Yeah. Yeah, Warner is his shoulders were close to going on the mat. No, this is the this is the position that that the Penn State wrestlers Jason, this, Nolf. Jason Nolf's position were able to go ahead and Get him back down, and there's a discussion going on between Angel Rivera and Kale Sanderson, so they're not looking at it. Of course, you got 
Tom there defending his position as well. Everything was going great for Warner, and it got interesting in the final 10 seconds. They are challenging loss of control. I don't think there's any doubt there was a loss of control. No doubt. But let's take a look at this. Okay, so now as he switches into this position, okay, Warner's holding on, and as Warner comes up, all right, that's when he takes him to his back. He gets the count, but notice how he's got that leg locked around the back of the neck, and he totally has control at this point. And so the official, Angel Rivera, is getting caught up, and this is the mechanical part of the officiating. You're so caught up into the count that sometimes you can lose track of what the action is. It's so exciting out there, but I think that this is a, a, a position where you might be able to give a reversal. Okay. So you can see that the Warner is clearly struggling. He's on his back, all right? And that looks to me like control. No change. Yeah. I think you're going to see in the future right, that right, that right. position right. gets called right. a little quicker, First, right? That it absolutely is what it is as far as control. Because, Jim, it could have been, to your point, it could have been two reversal and even some near fall. That's correct. So Warner keeps that 2 nothing lead. He's on bottom here to begin second period. Trying to erase a little riding time because you know Warner's going to be tough on top. Well, we saw this last week, Jim, against Patrick Brucky. Dean was so good on top. Credit Warner there with the escape because Dean could ride. He certainly can. He was able to go ahead and ride Brucky in that match and then get him out of position. So, again, the work that Warner needs to do in this match is, again, forward pressure, get that little angle again, and know that, that Max Dean is as is, is comfortable as he looks out there, right? He's going to be on the attack. He can attack both sides of the body. Dean, a two-time All-American, achieving those honors in a Cornell singlet. National finalist in 2018. Then, as you said, Jim, down at 184, the big win at the national tournaments, knocking off the Buckeye, Miles Martin. And beating Drew Foster of you and I to stand atop the podium inside of a minute. I'm really going to be surprised if, if, if Dean can't get to that leg. At some point in time in this match, we end up in one of those scrambles again. Saw a funny picture today, Jim, of Gabe Dean, three-time national finalist, two-time national champion, wearing a Penn State wrestling <laughs> sweatshirt. Of course, he lost to Bo Nickel when he was going for his third title, but great guy in the sport. Dave Dean, of course, their dad, wrestled at Minnesota. Great family. Dave Dean, one of my favorite guys over the years. Here's Warner. He's so good, Jim. Yep, they able to stuff the hips down right there, but he's not able to get to the shot. Now, counter shot there by Dean, so... Both guys firing away late in the second period. Love the intensity. Here's Dean. Going to work his way back up to his feet as he recovered from that shot. So critical at that point in time. Took the straight-on shot. And at that time, Warner not able to get anywhere close to going around. And so Dean is making some gradual adjustments in his attacks here. Getting cleaner looks. Jacob Warner and the Hawkeyes. They have to have this match from Jacob Warner at 197. They trail it by six. Hey, 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 that's on me. Listen, when you get out, Tony Cassiope just get and on. Greg Hercules. Okay? Set red. They're up next, that heavyweights. Riding time. Factor caution. right now. Second caution on Warner. Next one is a point. That's on you. He's just, Set on top. He's just kind of slowly slumping on at his opponent right there. Look for him to come into the crotch there. He's got the arm, right arm around. Dean doing a great job of covering the fingers right there. That was a great adjustment. He's made some great adjustments in this match so far. Fingers, and guys, right time go, is at 52 seconds, so he does not allow that to go over a minute. He's a takedown away from time, this. Working hard with that double underhook, taking some territory. Again, you don't want to push too low, low, too hard because Dean changes levels really well. Penn State trying to snap Iowa's 28 Big Ten dual meet win streak. Here's the battle within the battle, Shane. Right? 
Can Warner continue to go ahead and drift to the right, stuff the head, maybe get an attack in? Can Dean get to that left leg, right, the one that's all taped up right now? That's what he's trying to green, get to right there. He gets to it right there, green. and he, he gets his head out. Danger one. One danger count, one. neutral danger. Now he got both no of them. So close to near fall was Dean. Holding on for dear life. Now he comes back and gets to the other ankle. He's got to try to pass it. No control, gentlemen. Easy, I thought they easy. maybe gave him the takedown. They did not. No. Dean trying to tie this up. He should score here. Two There's the two. Down. 40 seconds left. He's got the lead. This reminds me of last week against Brucky. He needed the ride out to force sudden victory. Crank it away on a bow and arrow. Easy. He's got that elbow deep, really tight. Extending that, those toes. Now he figure fours that area there, but not much time. 20 seconds. You don't want to go too hard with this, but he goes all the way with it and collects the back points. And Penn State is going to snap this win streak. Once again, Max Dean gets it done in the third period. Four near fall to close it. Tremendous match. Tremendous conditioning. Tremendous adjustments during the course of the match here to gradually improve, always improving his position, winning those battles within the match. Max Dean. An 8-3 decision for Max Dean. Bunch of high fives from his Penn State teammates.